Hello, this is Spartan Commander, and this is the 294th Rome Total War Brotherhood game that I've put onto YouTube. Straight away, you'll see this has not been fought on the flat, featureless map. This has been fought on the Germanic Forest map. Now, what I like about this map is um, it's got big, wide open plains that you can go and fight on. If you want, if you want to open battle, you can. But if you say you want to bring a barbarian faction or something like that, you can fight in the trees there to get the woods bonus as well as the winter bonus. So I think this map's um, pretty good. It's got the best of both worlds, as um, some of the other maps I host on has. Okay, our first teammate is Brotherhood member Cal, who has bought the Rome Scipio faction. And our next teammate is... Uh, Brotherhood member Steve Longshanks. Now we're just going to have a look at Steve Longshanks army here um, for newer players to RTW. I'd just like to show you that Steve has only got two, three, four, he's only got seven infantry and seven archers. This is this army that he's been experimenting with lately. So that's seven infantry and seven archers. Now that does seem an extremely low amount of infantry to bring to the modern day battlefield. Let's have a look at his cavalry. Now, if you look at his cavalry, can you see the upgrades on that cavalry? There's nine upgrades. So that is three experience stripes, gold shield, gold attack. Those cavalry are fully upgraded. Let's see how many he's got. And he's got six. So he's got six fully upgraded cavalry, seven infantry, and seven archers. Should be interesting to see how well that does during the course of the battle. Our third teammate is Brotherhood member at Legion 22, who has bought his faction of choice, which is Macedon. Um, he really does like using the Mastodon faction and has become very, very good with Mastodon, as uh, I, sh I think probably in this battle we will see. I say I think he's got something like 13 or 14 pike units. Um, let's just have a look at the upgrades. Seven upgrades, so that's an experienced stripe, gold shield, gold attack. And he's got his Cretan archers. Now look at the upgrades on these Cretan archers. Seven upgrades. So that has also got an experienced stripe, gold shield, gold attack that makes these long range archers even better. And then, of course, he's got, I think, two units of cavalry, the companion cavalry or the winged horsemen, as they're sometimes called because of the kind of wings they've got on their helmets. So that's a pretty robust, tried and tested Mastodon army that Legion likes to use. And our last teammate is myself, a Spartan commander, who has also bought the Rome Scipio faction. Once again, this is quite an old army of mine. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how well it does. So there's our team, but you wait till you see the other team. It should be a great one. Okay, at this stage of the battle, I thought I'd show newer players uh, to RTW um, one of the uses of a pilot shield unit. Now, can you see here that um, Legion has bought a very cheap Levy Pikeman unit? Now, that's the cheapest 120-man um, unit in the Macedon faction there. But, um, and he's got no upgrades on it, but that um, actual uh, unit there will soak up Pilers as good as any other the, other the uh, expensive units that he's got there. So sometimes bringing a cheap uh, unit and putting no upgrades on and putting them in front of your army is quite a good option because obviously that leaves more money for you to upgrade your better troops. And just having a look at Steve's um, faction here, can you see there how he's got his seven infantry and seven archers? Should be interesting to see how well this army does during the course of the battle. And here is the other team. We have RTW player Tut. A lot of you will know Tut. Very good, uh, very well respected um, 31k player. And let's have a look at his army. And you can see he's bought his chosen archers. Good long range archers. And they're so tough you can use them as light infantry when they run out of arrows. Let's have a close look at his heavy infantry. Okay, so he's got his chosen axemen. Now remember these guys are effective against armor and used correctly, those axes can cut wide swathes through heavily armored troops like Roman urban cohorts. So they are always a unit to watch. Also I see he's got um, a unit of night raiders. Now remember night raiders are effective, um, a great effective infantry anyway, but they bring a fear factor which destabilizes uh, enemy units. And then we go on to the infamous berserkers. And remember these berserkers are based on real historic characters who literally went berserk when they went into battle. And look at the difference in size of the berserkers in comparison to ordinary infantry here. Can you see how big they are? And of course they've got those um, effective against armor maces and they've got those two hit points as well. So these berserkers bring a large fear factor 
um, and are extremely tough infantry. Okay, and then we move on to the Germanic Gothic Cavalry. Uh, Gothic Cavalry are extremely good. If you look at their specifications, you will see that these are very underestimated cavalry and used correctly in combination with its infantry and its allies. Those cavalry can be battle winning troops. Okay, their next teammate is. IOW SRAX, who has bought the Rome Julii faction. Just like to draw your attention here to his split his infantry into two armies there. One army of five, and um, the rest of his infantry is larger army, and I think he's got six uh, cavalry there. Their next teammate is um, Winter Hawk, but is in fact Scorpion King SR. Okay, so that's Scorpion King SR, another player who's played um, RTW since the first day that it came out. And I'd just like to draw your attention to he's got six infantry, only six infantry. Um, and I think that he has got um, one, um, well, six good infantry and a town watch unit that he's going to use for his pilot shield unit there. If you notice the upgrades on his uh, heavy infantry there, he's got... Um, experience stripe gold shield golden attack but if you look at the rest of his um, cavalry here can you see that he's got eight upgrades so that's two experience stripes gold shield gold attack makes that cavalry really tough and I think he's got five something like uh, what's that one two three four five six, something like seven um, archer units there so he's got six heavy infantry uh, a town watch unit for his um, pilot shield unit and about seven archers and six eight upgrades um, cavalry there so that's not bad army unusual though and their fourth teammate is IOW Sparky who has bought the Rome SPQR faction um, so there's the enemy team there full of really good experienced players this should be a great battle for you to watch and I hope you enjoy it okay at this very very early stage of the battle here you can see that the um, the enemy SPQR troops are running over, a cavalry running over to try and catch my infantry as they're moving. I must say, if I remember right in this battle, we did have a little bit of lag in this battle. I hope that doesn't spoil uh, your enjoyment of the battle too much. But there was a little bit of lag, and I believe, if I remember right, there was a little bit of glitching as well. Um, once again, I hope that doesn't um, spoil um, the enjoyment of the battle for you. So to say, straight away you can see the enemy team being aggressive, running their troops over here. Right, newer players for RTW, that's what we call a glitch. Can you see where all of um, that cavalry is kind of spread out across the battlefield? And you never attack troops are, that are glitched. In fact, if, if possible, you pull your troops back so you don't get any cheap kills. Let's say here you can see the enemy being quite aggressive here on this left flank, moving out towards my army quite faster in the hope of being able to catch my army in the flank as I was moving over to my allies. But um, there you are. can you see the glitch is kind of mending itself now and the troops go back into the formation that they're supposed to. Now luckily Sparky wouldn't have uh, suffered any casualties there because the glitch went out to the rear of their own team. So uh, no, it wouldn't have come towards any of our troops there. But as I say, new players um, to RTW, when you see a player glitch, never ever attack. Because you'll end up with that player probably leaving the game and then the whole get other players will leave the game and the game will just end. Okay, over here on the right flank you can see Legion's got his Macedon units there. Those pikes there he's bought specifically to target the Germania army to counter the Germania attack. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how well Legion does there with his pikes against the Germania uh, general. As you can see here, Steve with his 7 infantry is facing um, Scorpion King SR with his 6 heavy infantry. Right, can you see how, here how Scorpion King has brought his archers across here? Remember, I think he's got 7 archers. Now notice they're not in open order, he's kind of just masked them there. Um, I presume he's doing that for more um, impact effect. But if you notice that Steve's um, archer units have lost a heck of a lot of... Um, archers already in those units um, killed by Scorpion King's archers there. Over there on our left flank or the enemy right flank there you can see the SBQR army slowly moving towards mine and if you notice that the SBQR general has brought his cavalry out to our left flank they're ready to charge in when he needs to. If you notice here, our team's kind of, um, I suppose, set up a bit of a defensive formation there. 
and of course if you go too passive you do tend to hand the initiative to the enemy so it'll be interesting to see if we do stay passive can you notice here that srax as we saw earlier has split his two army his infantry up into two armies and then moving one of his uh, his smaller army round to our right flank here I see there's German, uh, Germanic cavalry out there and you've of course got the uh, chosen archers there shooting at um, Legion's um, archers. But remember Legion's archers had those seven upgrades? Remember the experienced stripe gold shield gold attack? So um, the uh, the impact of their arrows will be quite uh, devastating on the, uh, the enemy troops there. We went over to the left here on our left flank. As I said you could see that uh, the SBQR cavalry is out to our left and that SBQR infantry may well attack me and that cavalry may try and charge into my flank that's why I've placed my cavalry there as a counter to that cavalry hit they say uh, Steve here is facing Scorpion King's infantry about the same numbers on uh, both sides there um, sometimes Steve can become quite aggressive with his um, tactics here and if you notice here can you see he's moving aggressively towards Scorpion King's infantry Nice aggressive attacking move there by Steve, even though he's only got um, seven infantry. Right, can you see that cavalry charging in? And bang! As that Julii cavalry charges into uh, one of Steve's forward units there. A nice aggressive cavalry uh, attack there by um, Scorpion King. Now I thought that unit would have routed it, smashed into, because that was such an aggressive hit there. Remember, Scorpion King's cavalry's got eight upgrades, two experience stripes, and gold shield, gold attack. If you notice now, we are counter-attacking with some of our um, Skippy Eye cavalry. If you notice, I'm running my army forward now to support Steve. If you notice those red archers there, um, they've had their skirmish mode um, disabled, so they're just standing their ground. Um, now that could be a bit of a disadvantage for them because they would have normally run away but now they're in contact with my infantry so they probably will rout soon. As I run my infantry forward and kind of um, envelop those archers my guess is they will both uh, both those units now will rout which they've just done. Meanwhile over here you can see there's a big tussle between Steve and um, Scorpion King's um, cavalry and infantry there. But if you notice, I'm still moving my infantry forward um, all the time here to try and support Steve's flank as we're aggressively moving forward here. Right, let's just pause again for a second. So here, as you can see on our left flank, I'm trying to keep up with Steve's aggressive attack there. But in the centre here, in the left centre, you can see that most of Scorpion King's, or a lot of Scorpion King's units, have now been routed by Steve and Cal's um, double team attack on Scorpion King's infantry and cavalry there. A nice combination attack there by Steve and Cal as, uh, as I said kind of routed most of Scorpion King's units there. Also Cal's got most of his infantry out there facing that right flank where the Germanic um, generals using his troops there. Uh, if you notice he's run them out of the woods now um, looking for a place to hit. And meanwhile, right over on our right flank here, you can see that S-Rax, remember he split his uh, infantry into two armies there, is trying to uh, do a flanking action there with his smaller army. So there's a general overview of the battle as it stands at the moment. Of course, the Germanic general will want to attack where there's no pikes, so he will try and get to the opposite side of where the Macedon pikes are. And if you notice, he looks like he's running his troops over here. Right, let's just pause the game for a second. Uh, right, you can see that um, here the SBQR army is moving towards my um, my Scipii army there. And you've got um, still attacking here in the right centre and there's a Berserker unit that's just been activated. It probably goes through for um, some of those Scipii units in front of our um, Macedon alloy there. And there you go, you can see that Berserker unit just charged into one of our Scipio units, but there's a lot of pilots hitting that unit. I think a cavalry hit's just come in. And there you go, they've stopped being Berserk now. If you notice the red banner is not is not activated anymore. Okay, if you notice the SRAX is doing this massive um, right flank connection. In fact, he's trying to get in behind us. But can newer players for RCWC that it could be a bit risky what he's doing here? Okay, he's getting himself a little bit isolated in behind us. Right, at the front here, can you see that the, the enemy have pulled back a bit and we've pulled back from the enemy a little bit there, but Srax's army now has got in behind us. Nice tactical move, knowing where the weak spot is, uh, spots are of um, 
arm is on our side, of course, the rear. So it's a nice tactical move to get in behind us, but I'm sure both veterans and new players alike can see he is getting a little bit isolated in behind us there, especially as our forward units are not engaged with enemy troops at this time. It looks to me like SRAX is trying to come over to my flank here, maybe to attack the rear of my infantry while his SBQ or ally attacks the front. Something like a vice attack. <coughs> That's what seems to be happening here. Um, as I say, you can see the Julia army behind us moving right over to my flank from the other flank in behind me while his SBQR ally starts moving forward to engage my troops. I think my allies will spot that, I hope, <laughs> and bring over some reinforcements because otherwise that's going to be a really nasty vice-like attack into the rear of my troops and to the front of my uh, troops there as well. If you notice that uh, my Mastodon Ally Legions brought over some um, pike units there. If you notice I'm charging my cavalry and I'm bang as that cavalry goes in. I saw that SRAX units were still moving there so before they settled I wanted to hit them. Try and cause as many casualties as I could. But as I say, uh, SRAX's army is still quite isolated at the rear of our team there. Right, just pause the game for a second. Right, as you can see here, there's a lot of enemy cavalry here on our left flank. Plus the SBQR army is starting to engage my units at the front here. But if you notice, my Macedon ally has moved some units over and is facing rear. He's covering the rear of my troops there. So if the Julio army attacks, all they're going to do is run into my um, ally's pikes there. So that's a nice bit of teamwork by Legion 22. Remember new players watching this battle, team battles are all about that teamwork. So that's nice covering there by Legion. You've got the Germanic general looking to hit us where he can, but he wants to avoid the pikes like the plague. So he doesn't want to get involved in any, anywhere near the pikes with his Germanic army because he knows his infantry would die quickly. I see we got <coughs> Gothic cavalry out to our right flank ready to charge in when needed. And there's Esrax's uh, army engaged with, um, with some of our troops there. Let's say you can see my cavalry charged into some of Esrax's army behind us. But as I say, Esrax is a little bit isolated in behind us there. I can see the tactic was to come over to this flank to attack the rear of my uh, army while his ally attacked the front. But we've managed to block that now. And it was a bit of a gamble because, as I say, um, his army could be annihilated now if we move fast enough um, to attack those troops. As I say, a nice bit of covering there by Legion, bringing his pikes over there to cover the rear of my troops from Esrax's uh, Julii infantry attacking. But there's a lot of enemy cavalry out here on our left flank. See myself and Cal charging our cavalry in to take out a couple of uh, Esrax's Julii units. I think he had his smaller army over on that side there. And his larger infantry army is here. But as I say, you can see... Yeah, they've got a lot of cavalry coming over, but that army, um, as we said earlier, is, I think, um, a little bit isolated there. As you can see, as I say, the enemy have got a lot of cavalry over here and are charging them in now. Maybe this amount of cavalry charging in could be a pivotal part of the battle. If they all hit at once, in a big combination cavalry hit, they could route a lot of our units. All the time the Germanic, um, I think, um, chosen archers are shooting fire arrows into us. Just pause the game for a second. So here you've got uh, Germania uh, archers and cavalry there ready to charge in, that cavalry ready to charge in. You've got um, enemy cavalry and we've got infantry and cavalry there engaging that enemy cavalry. Um, Esrax's army has been engaged by both Cal and uh, Legion's Macedon units there. Let's say at the front here, you can see Spark, his SBQR army, is throwing pilers in, ready to attack my units. <clears throat> and a Germanic general is in a bit of a dilemma because where does he attack to avoid the pikes? You see his berserker units out there? He's got those two berserker units and all his infantry ready to attack, but he needs to avoid those pikes like the plague. He does not want to get involved with those pikes, and Legion's making it as difficult as he can for him um, to attack. So it's nice tactical movements by um, by Legion there with his pikes to try and uh, neutralise any Germania attack that might come in. 
Okay, over here on the cavalry side here, you can see we've routed most of the enemy cavalry that charged in there. Um, we've got Cal's infantry plus our own cavalry there that countered that, uh, that cavalry hit. Right, can you see the Germanic general bringing berserkers and infantry round here, looking to try and smash into any of our Roman allies there with his Germanic force. But if you notice, Legion's note, uh, noticed this and is bringing his pike units across to counter the Germanic general's move. I think it must be extremely frustrating for the Germania general here to see how well Legion's using his pikes. Um, don't forget, remember those Germanic infantry would die really quickly if they attacked pikes head on. Both Legion know this and Tut knows this. Nice counter moves there by Legion. Bearing in mind that he's um, fighting in several parts of the battlefield at the moment. To be watching Germania that close is pretty good. So there's Pikes blocking the Germania attack there. As I say, must be extremely frustrating for Tut. He's running his infantry all over the place here, trying to look for places that he can hit with his infantry. But Legion so far has managed to block him. You've got SBQR units being extremely aggressive here in their attack on our left flank. But I think we've just routed SRAX's general. Yeah, we've just routed SRAX's general. So most of SRAX's infantry now has been annihilated. As we thought, um, they obviously had a tactic to try and come over to this flank and charge into the back of my infantry. But his army did get a little bit isolated, and um, kind of paid the paid the price for uh, for that there. Right, you see the Germanic cavalry charging in there into the flank of. Um, Legion's general trying to rout his general there. Remember though that all pike units have got anti-cavalry bonus. So when you charge into a pike unit, make sure you know what you're doing, where you're going to hit, um, because if you don't, then that uh, that cavalry anti-cavalry bonus will make a big difference to uh, how many of your cavalry survive. Right, if you notice, I'm moving my cavalry round to the left flank there. As you can see, um, Legion's moving his pikes here uh, to try and still counter that Germania attack. Remember, most of the Germania infantry are intact, with those effective against armor axemen um, and those berserkers there. Can you see one of the berserker units has been activated and is charging into the flank of one of um, Legion's Maston units there? But if you notice, the infantry, Germania infantry now has moved up. Now I can see if they charge in. Right, if you notice that uh, Legion's moving his mast on units forward, but there you go, can you see there's no pikes there, and that Germania army is going to charge into my tired infantry. Let's just pause the game for a second. Right, so you've got the Berserker acts of activated there, you've got Legion bringing some of his pikemen through, you've got cavalry charging, but the main thing is you've got this Germanic intact infantry going to charge into my infantry that is already engaged with SBQR, enemy SBQR infantry there so that Germanic um, charge there could smash and rout my army especially if he charges cavalry in as well remember he got those effective against armor axemen the night raiders that bring fear and the berserker units as well over here on the left you can see that we're battling with the enemy SBQR troops here I've got my cavalry around there as well to charge him If you notice I charge on my cavalry in, but if you notice the SBQR general spotted that and have moved the unit over to counter my cavalry hit there. Okay, meanwhile over here on the right, can you see that whole Germanic infantry, that Germanic infantry there that was completely intact, charging into my infantry there. Now if that Germanic cavalry, can you see the cavalry? If that charges in to finish off that attack, I can see my whole army in that area being routed. Remember those effective against armor axemen are really cutting a swathe through my infantry. And there comes the Gothic cavalry. Right here comes the Germanic uh, Gothic cavalry with the impact and charge bonus of that cavalry. And bang as that cavalry goes in. It's going to go straight through my general unit. If my general routes, of course, that's going to lower the morale of all my troops. Nice um, Germanic attack there. No yeah, my general's just been routed. Behave. A nice combination of infantry and cavalry attack there by the Germanic general. Really nice hit there. Well done, Tut. That was a good hit. Um, I think he'd been waiting a long time to be able to charge his infantry and because of um, the great use of pikes by Legion. Okay, so you can see, remember the enemy of the purple SBQR and the Germanic um, army and the red July army. And we're the blue and the Macedon. Army there, so you can see exactly what's going on by just a glance. Over, you can see that Germanic infantry charging through there. 
If you notice, I'm trying to charge a couple of my battle damage cavalry into the flank of those attacking Germanic um, infantrymen there. The general is dead. His men know their doom approaches. But overall, I think Legion's done an exceptional job with his pike strike. Can you see how he's actually um, countering those Germanic cavalry there? I think Tut would like to have charged them into the rear of our engaged troops, but um, Legion's brought those uh, pikemen over to counter that. Nice use of pikes there against Germania. You see I've got a few battle damaged units here trying to hold out against the Germanic um, effective against armor axemen there. And once again, I'm going to charge my cavalry in there to try and um, route some of those um, engaged the enemy, enemy units. The show their true virtue. They are not soldiers, only frightened rabbits running from our men. As you can see, remember the enemy are the purple SBQR and the Germanic tribe. I think that's the only ones left. I think most of the red units now, Julia units, have been routed. You notice that Germanic cavalry, that Gothic cavalry, is kind of roaming the battlefield looking for targets to hit. Now whether that cavalry might be um, a pivotal part of the battle, maybe if they can hit into the rear of our engaged troops, causing a mass rout, because all our troops will be tired now. Right, I think Legion spotted the danger of that Gothic cavalry. And if you notice, he's brought a lot of his pikemen over. But if you notice, our um, Scipio allies general has just been routed, and we're losing a lot of Scipio units over here on that flank. Great gods be praised. The enemy general okay, let's just take stock of exactly what's happening here. As you can see, a lot of our um, allies Scipio units are starting to rout there. Um, with enemy attacks. But over here on the other flank, you can see we've just killed the Germanic general. And I think we've just routed the last of the Germanic infantry there. But there's still a lot of that, um, that Germanic Gothic cavalry left. There's still some enemy SBQR units fighting there, so it'd be interesting to see um, what happens here on this flank. I think this is um, bang as that Germanic cavalry goes into the rear of those Mastal infantry. But I think it's been a good display of how to use pikes um, against um, Germania here in this battle. Legions use his pikes extremely well, I think, um, at countering the Germanic general. And I remember after the battle, I think Tut congratulated Legion on how well he countered the Germania army there. So I thought that was uh, a nice touch um, there for him to uh, to congratulate Legion. So as you can see here, it looks like we've. Um, We've managed to um, full of fear, and now they to go on and um, routed most of the um, enemy troops. There. I think there's only a couple of archery units left, maybe. But if you just look at show you how tough the battle was, look at the upgrade. Look at the um, amount of units that I've got uh, men left in each unit there. Now, bearing in mind these troops have got an experience stripe on, so they're really tough. I got one unit with 18. I think one unit was with 10. One unit with seven, not a lot. And if you look at the Macedon units as well, you can see how battle depleted they are, bearing in mind they're 120 man units. And I think this could be the last of the enemy um, units here. A uh, couple of, um, two or three of the archery units charging in, which my guess they will soon, um, that's it, they soon routed the there. The enemy's hearts are full of fear and now so um, there might be a couple of Germanic uh, units left, maybe. I think I can see a Germanic archery unit left. I think that will be about the only um, enemy unit left there. As you can see, the battle was quite intense over quite a wide area of, uh, of the battlefield there. Here are the last unit of the Germanic um, troops has just, um, just routed there. So uh, my guess is it's going to be quite a close battle. I would have thought looking at... Uh, yeah, there you go. It's... Um, a close battle there, and it's, I would have thought it had been very close if this game did that. That was so um, that was uh, so close there. So, uh, first thing I'd like to say is really well played to everybody in the game there. Some really nice moves. Um, and as I say, it was only a close victory. And what I'd like to draw your attention to is the two people in the losing team, Tut and Sparky, have both got the highest kills in the game. 
Now this is really unusual. Sometimes you might get one um, team member in the enemy team that, that have lost with the highest kills, but to get two, Tut and Spark, you've got, as I say, the two highest kills in the battle, and still we managed to win the game there. So it's very, very unusual. That's one of the reasons I wanted to show this battle. Um, as you can see, Steve Longshank's got some good kills too, but really the rest of our kills are quite average. Um, and as I say, with Tut and Sparky getting so many kills, well done to them. Um, but poor old Esrax got caught around the rear of our army there. That's why he didn't get too many kills. Um, I could see the tactic they, that they were trying there, but unfortunately he got a little bit isolated. And as I say, it was um, <coughs> a close a close victory there. Um, but it was nice to see um, Legion and Tut. Uh, it was like chess players there, I thought. Uh, and they were both trying different moves there to try and counter the other. And uh, I thought it was a great display of um, Legion's um, pike skills there as he managed to um, kind of counter the Germania attack. But uh, as I say, really well done uh, to Tut, Esrax, Scorpion King and Sparky. Really well played, guys. Some nice attacking aggressive moves there. And really well done to Steve Longshanks, Cal and Legion. A really nice teamwork. Spartan Commanders, and hope you enjoyed the battle, and bye for now.